Hey everybody, Vigorous Rapscallion here with another quick chip tutorial. Today we're going to be going over two more. We're going to be going over the delay chip and the timer chip. So let's start with the delay chip. Get that nice and centered in front of us and let's take a little look and figure out what this bad boy is going to do for us. Looks like we've got a signal for one of the inputs. We've got a delay for the other input, and we've got a zero right now. So what that's going to do is any signal you put into this red node is going to come out of this red output node after a designated delay time. So let's say we want to delay something for three seconds. That seems like it'd be pretty easy to do. Let's say we want to take this signal, the signal coming out of that button, and we want it to take three seconds before it actually executes something in our program. So, let's get this all connected first of all. So that's going to be our input there. That's going to be our time. And let's get an output chip. So we can monitor what's happening in our system. Connect that. Okay, good. Right now we're getting nothing. So it seems pretty simple to set a delay of three seconds. It seems like we should just have to hit this three times, and that should delay at three seconds. Okay. Now, you'll notice that seemed like it was a lot less than three seconds, because it was. Uh, this actually works in tenths of a second, not in seconds. And the reason for that is you might want more precise control. You can use these delay chips as a sort of flow control in your programs. If you want to make sure that something happens before something else happens in the program, you can just set one of these to one-tenth of a second, and that'll give you enough delay that the other thing will execute first. So they're useful for flow control that way. Uh, but we didn't want uh, three-tenths of a second. We wanted three seconds. So to, to get that... We're just going to have to multiply by 10 and give ourselves, oops, <laughs> going to have to pull that up in a different direction. There we go. We're going to have to put 30 if we want 3 seconds. And that should work. Hit it by accident. But there it was. 1 1,000, 2 1,000, 3 1,000. So it looks like that basic function works. So that's the basic functionality of our delay chip here. But there's a few other things that I want to mention before you move on from this. So as I mentioned, there's an input here that corresponds to this output. Whatever value you put in is going to come out. So what if we don't want a 1? We don't want it to pulse a 1 every time. We want it to pulse a 4. That's pretty simple to set up. Cement do connect there. Now let's actually set the value we want to come out first. Let's make that a 4. I like 4s if you can't tell. Uh, always a good number to test things with. It just feels right. Uh, let's go ahead and get that hooked up. So our 4, as soon as I let go of this button, is going to feed into our delay chip after our 3 second delay or a 30 tenth of a second delay, if you want to look at it that way. We're going to get an output. And that output was indeed 4. Now, you might have noticed that it seems like we should just be getting a constant 4 output from there, because the variables are a constant integer output. Uh, they don't just pulse. However, the delay pulses in every case. It's actually more useful to have it set up like this, because I've already gone over in another video how you can very easily hold a value using a combinator that's looped back to itself, so I'm not going to go over that again. Um, and it's useful for the opposite. When you've got an integer stream that is constant, and say it's going into a combinator, so you just want it to pulse once, you can basically use a delay chip as a sort of pulser chip to uh, get a value once and then have it stop pulsing. Now, you might be wondering, well, how do I get it to pulse again? You know, how can I handle that? There's two ways you could handle that. You could either have a pulse of a 1 hooked up to a variable, or it's actually going to automatically reset that delay every time the integer going into our red input changes. That's really handy. So let's go ahead and make sure that works. Change it to a 5. And three seconds later, we had a 5 pulse for a second. 
So that's really useful. You know, you don't have to worry too much about resetting this thing. As long as it's getting a new value, it's going to output it after the delay that we've put into our green node. So those are the basics of the delay chip. Let's move on to the second chip we're going to deal with today, the timer chip. Now, what you're going to be using this for pretty often is say you want to set a time limit on a game or an event, you're going to use this timer chip over here. Let's grab our connector and find out what all our nodes here do. Looks like we've got a timer expired ping, time remaining, an on off switch, and time. So the time input is going to be how long this timer is going to count down from. Uh, just like our delay chip here, it's not going to use seconds, it uses tenths of a second. So if we want a nice dramatic 10 second countdown timer, we're not going to put in a 10, we're going to put in a 100. So tap there. Great. Let's get that all hooked up. And let's grab another output chip because we also want to take a look at this red output here as well as her time remaining output. So, unhook that. Great, so it seems like all we have to do to start our timer is to initialize the system to hit this toggle here. So that seems pretty simple to do. We've got a big old button right in front of us. Let's hook it up. Oh. Well, nothing happened. Now, that's because this needs a constant input to work. This is just pulsing for a tenth of a second. And if you want proof of that, I'm going to go ahead and keep hitting this. And after I've hit the button ten times, it goes down to a nine. So we need a constant input to keep our timers running. Uh, just as a sample, let's just use the wall button is pressed output from our button. So as long as I'm holding this button down, the timer should continue to go down. And it doesn't always work reliably. But let's take a look and watch that ping up there. Now you'll notice for just a tenth of a second, it uh, flashed out a one from that output. That's useful because once your timer finishes, you can use that to reset the whole system, whether that's the game or the small piece of the program that that timer deals with. Now, obviously, this isn't really an ideal solution for a lot of different reasons. One, you have to keep your hand on top of it to get the timer to go. And that's not very convenient. I guess you could play a one-handed shooting game. Right now, you also can't have players activate buttons by standing on them. So uh, you can't just have a player, say, stand in one spot to keep a timer going. Uh, and also, that's just kind of a gross, janky solution. It wouldn't look good in your setup. We definitely want to be able to just toggle this timer into its on state with a single push. And we're just going to use a, com a combinator to do that. That's set up to hold an integer value. I showed how to do that in the uh, tutorial video I made on uh, combinator, uh, what was it? combinator variable and comparer chips. Uh, let's go ahead and get this output. So every time this button is pressed now, this is going to iterate by one, it's going to go up. Uh, and as long as that number's above a one, the timer's gonna continue to go. Let's turn it on. So that's great. And luckily, no matter how many times you hit it, it's not gonna go at a different speed. It's just gonna keep going like that. But one problem, as you probably noticed, is it just starts over once it gets to the end. It does ping that one each time it starts over, so that's useful. But uh, we're definitely going to want it to not just keep on doing the timer over and over. We only want it to activate when a player pushes that button. So like I said earlier, we just take this ping, we connect it to a reset, and now when this counts down, it should just stop at the end. And there you go, our system's reset. We've got a simple timer set up that we can use to time games. So that's all the basics of uh, timers and delay chips. I'm going to be taking these two chips and adding them to the little bucket master game that I set up in a video I made earlier this week. I should have the update to that posted in about six hours so you can see how we're gonna integrate these into a system and how we can use this to start making things a little more complicated and looking a bit more like a game. 
Uh, besides that, I've got more tutorial videos coming. As I said, I plan on doing every chip in this list. I'm going to try and get a video up once every two to three days. The next one is going to feature gizmos. We have enough going on that we can start getting gizmos into the mix. Uh, so if that's something you want to learn about, stay tuned. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any comments at all about how I could improve these videos, things that you'd like to see me do in future videos, just go ahead and leave those down in the comment section. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and have a nice day.